Hello folks, so today I'm just going to do a quick video demonstrating something which I think a lot of you might find useful. So any of you guys following the Twitter saga will know that Twitter have recently uh, stopped allowing the use of third party clients to access your Twitter account. This has obviously uh, irritated a lot of people and rightfully so. Uh, I've kind of not really used Twitter very much lately, uh, largely because like Mastodon for me is just a more fun place to be, but you know, to each their own. And um, and for those that um, might be like less interested in Twitter, but want to keep one foot in, maybe there's a few uh, Twitter accounts that you quite enjoy following. Uh, there is this wonderful app. It's free and open source. It's available on the Afteroid store and on the Google Play store called Fritter. So uh, I can't really show you too much of it here, but this is this is what it looks like. So it looks a little bit like a sort of a standard material design Twitter third party uh, app. Uh, however, you don't need a Twitter account to use it. It scrapes from the Twitter website so that it sort of bypasses the third party uh, app API, which is kind of good. Um, so if you if there were a couple of accounts or a couple of accounts on Twitter that, you know, usually update with some news bits or some, you know, like there are some good meme accounts, stuff like that. If you want to keep an eye on those, then you can install Fritter. I'll put a link to it, of course, in the description of this video. Uh, and then you can uh, you can import your subscriptions or you can just start subscribing in you. Uh, it allows you to just have a basic Twitter feed like you used to have. You can group your Twitter feeds so you can have, you know, one for work, one for for, for personal use. You can uh, do uh, you can keep um, abreast of the trends so you don't necessarily miss out on that. I often find that one of the more useful things about Twitter is the actual trending page. It actually gives you an idea about what the, the public conversation is about. Well, you still get that on Fritter as well. And, and you know, you don't need your, your Twitter account, which is which is kind of good. So it's a, it's a way to, uh, you know, keep you, uh, keep you in the loop without actually having to deal with all of the shit that Twitter's throwing at you these days. And there is a lot of it. One of the things about Twitter that's making me particularly eye the exit, not that I even really use it much these days is the fact that they're pushing twitter blue so hard i understand that twitter and social media in general is a very difficult uh, market to actually make a profit in and uh, with the new acquisition from elon musk he's like kind of looking to like actually generate some revenue from this uh, a lot of people used uh, social media a lot of companies use social media in the same way that companies used to use like video games like microsoft used to use video it's like a, a foot in different markets to strengthen your corporate brand to as a marketing tool, all that kind of stuff. Um, I believe Twitter's making money. Uh, I believe YouTube's making money, but um, that is as a result of over a decade's worth of investment. Also, pre-roll video advertising is just, um, it makes orders of magnitude more money than, um, than than anything that requires you to click on it to, to monetize. Um, and this is in fact why you see a lot of uh, sort of uh, videos on websites like the autoplay it's basically because it's a really good way to generate views it's a really good way to generate uh, pre-roll post-roll advertising it's just a money spinner and that's really all it is uh, as irritating as it is and i know that there are many among you who who would love to see the end of of, of all of that autoplaying video uh, stuff yourself myself included uh then but that's that's why like it's it's all about the it's all about the money at the end of the day so with uh, um fritter of course uh you'd actually it actually bypasses all the adverts you, you don't get any advertising on twitter uh you don't get hounded to subscribe to twitter blue and to me it looks like that twitter blue is going to be the thing that they're going to sort of it, they're going to push harder and harder and harder over over the years uh insofar that if you're in any way a regular Twitter user, you're going to be expected to pay the, I don't know, what is it, 12, 12 pounds a month or whatever it is to to, to use Twitter Blue. Uh, it's, it's already starting to look like if you want any kind of exposure on Twitter nowadays, you're going to have to start looking at, at paying for it, which is, you know, this is the prerogative of Elon Musk at the end of the day. You know, it's it's... Uh, you can't necessarily expect and feel entitled to using a company's services uh, for free, uh, especially when that company is making a loss at providing those services. Uh, it's it's just not going to be a sustainable way of doing business. And and, and social media is a kind of new uh, enterprise in and of itself. And it's it's very interesting to see how it gets funded. Interestingly enough, like Mastodon, the Fediverse, all that kind of stuff, it's like it's it's proven itself uh, to be more sustainable in a lot of ways, not necessarily in every way, shape or form. A lot of it re requires the goodwill of of uh, people, you know, uh, contributing service spaces as a, as a donation or all that kind of stuff. But because it's so spread out, if one company goes bankrupt, 
uh, or one company gets acquired by uh, you know a problematic uh, corporation then uh, it's the the Fediverse still lives on and people can move around and adapt and adjust as necessary and in fact if you want the ultimate in, in, in sustainability uh, you can just run like a Plarum instance uh, off of a Raspberry Pi in your house admittedly there are some like security concerns about that but you know a single user instance on a five pound a month digital lotion droplet or whatever um you know there's a world there's a wealth of options out there um have you, you know I'm, I'm i wouldn't be surprised if uh, if in you know years to come we start seeing people have a, a crafty server or, uh, that they keep running at work or something um and that way you keep the the bandwidth and the electricity and all that kind of stuff you know you're sort of siphoning it off the company and things like that um yeah so anyway just a quick video to to let you know that Fritter exists. It's really useful. It's basically uh, how I use Twitter now. I don't have any of the Twitter apps on my phone. I generally don't because they're just a little bit too like um, manipulative, really. They try and manipulate your behavior into uh, using their system and engaging with their system the way that they want you to. And and I and I imagine many of you prefer a little bit of of autonomy over how you engage with social media platforms. So. Uh, like I say, links in the uh, description are down below. And um, yeah, let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to take a look at. I've had a few video suggestions that I will try and get around to. Times are pretty busy these days, but I'm going to try and, and, and um, make, you know, get back into video making. Also, uh, I will be streaming a lot more over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash chrisware. I'll try and put links to it everywhere, but if you want links to all of the stuff that I'm working on and, and doing at the moment, uh, you can just go to my website, chrisware.wales. Everything spans out from there. And uh, who knows, maybe at some point I might put something that I write on there as well. Um, actually, there is stuff that I write on there, so there you go, ahead of you. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna and I'm gonna be like dottering around on different platforms a lot more, to be honest, because YouTube these days just isn't that exciting. Uh, and it isn't like for people like me. It isn't for smaller, uh, sort of, uh, you know, yeah, smaller creators uh, these days. They're trying to make it a little bit. I'm not well, and I say smaller creators. I mean like less than a hundred thousand uh, subscriber type creators. Um, you know, there are like smaller studios that are doing quite well on YouTube, and I enjoy watching content from them. But when it comes to the sort of the one man band thing, such as myself, it just feels like there are other places that are more suited to to what I do. Uh, and I'm going to try and find those places and and, and see what see what what. Um, what they they offer including uh, a lot of places in the fediverse as well so there's going to be there, there is already is content that i put out in the fediverse video content and other stuff that um i don't put out anywhere else and um and, and i really quite enjoy using twitch as well because it allows me to sort of chat with you guys uh, in a little bit more of a, a direct manner as well because i don't make these videos to sort of uh, you know push an agenda or or make a point or to try and gain subscribers i i, I do it because i i it's it's my way of sort of participating in the free and, and open source community it's the thing that i do and um, if YouTube becomes just a little bit, you know, if, if, if it becomes a little bit more hostile to that, then there's just no point in being here, really. No, um, you know, dis no, no disappointment. And, and there are still plenty of people that watch stuff here on YouTube, so I'll, I'll continue to make it. But I also don't want to put all of my eggs in the YouTube basket, obviously. That, that just doesn't make any kind of sense. So, um, you know, keep, uh, keep a look at my website. Keep following me on Mastodon. That's where I am most of the time these days. Uh, and um, I'm having a grand old time over there. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. That's about it from me today. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.